feeling appreciated. I work in networking. The ticket I had earlier was involving a network printer. Teacher mentioned that three other tech people were here prior to me and they couldn't get the printer to print wireless instead of using her USB. For the school district I work for, we always tried to have our printers on the LAN switch instead of wireless network just due to the traffic increase across the wireless would be insane. I get to the school, start doing my thing, drop was activated already. Wiring was good, I was able to get out to the internet. So I knew instantly the wireless was enabled on the printer. Easy peasy, right? The teacher was looking at me while I'm configuring the printer. Like, wow, you seem so calm when you work. <laughs> I'm like, well, I've been doing this a while, but got the printer switched to the DHCP and all is good. After a reboot and the right IP pulled, she was able to print wirelessly. Afterwards, she goes, oh my God, you did what three other techs couldn't do. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's the simple things, you know? What's up, guys? Welcome back to Storytime with Uncle John. Today, we're taking a look at r slash tales from tech support. So didn't get a Saturday at the bridge done this week because we had some sound issues. It's funny because usually it's video issues or some other issue, internet issues. Uh, this week it was sound. I have no idea what I did wrong, why things were coming out tinny and like, you know, you guys have complained before and I've, I've tweaked it and fixed it, but this was worse than ever. Like anything I've ever put up as far as sound goes. And I just noticed when I pulled everything out of my backpack and set it on my desk to set this setup up, I hate that. Anyway, that I had the phantom power on for a condenser microphone. I don't normally use a condenser microphone, so I'm wondering if that's why things were so goofy because it was trying to send power through a dynamic microphone, which doesn't really hurt anything, but it doesn't really do anything either, so except evidently chop up my sound and make it sound absolutely horrible. Also, you may notice a little bit more echo in this room than normal because uh, I'm used to having a bookshelf here. No, no bookshelf. <laughs> so we're, we're kind of getting this house. Uh, let's just say we're getting this house ready to show and uh, kind of got to start clearing the surfaces, clearing out the clutter and, it's really kind of difficult clearing out 20 years of clutter so that you can, so that other people can envision their clutter in here. But anyway, we're going to see what we can do. And uh, got a lot of painting done in here yesterday and all around the house. So wish us luck. We all fall down and a reintroduction. Hello again, or maybe for the first time. Some of you might remember me from such stories as Peanut Butter Jelly Drive, Interrupting Cow, and The Wireless Printer Before Time. I've been quiet for a while and have a very good reason for that. I'm lazy. Eh, that's not a good reason. But what was I supposed to say? Oh, I've changed jobs and I'm now actually in tech support. For reals. That's right. I'm now half of the one-man, one-woman crew that supports four U.S.-based plants plus a Canadian warehouse, a Mexican warehouse, and a whole gaggle of remote salesmen, customer support, and a bunch of other characters from a few different countries. And I've been compiling stories. Most may only be posted after a good amount of time has passed to better abstract people and places to keep nosy Nellies from making incriminating connections. But that's okay because I've been here for three years now and I have a few stories to tell. So with that introduction and reintroduction out of the way, I have a recent story involving Big Blue, old data, and money. Time frame is August 2024. I've been with the company for nearly three and a half years at this point. It's been great. The people are generally great. The work is sometimes tough but rewarding and I've really helped my boss out by taking over projects and most daily tasks, freeing her up to actually be able to take vacation and enjoy herself from time to time. This was not one of those times. Here's some background. Several years before my employment, the company I now work for was bought out by a multinational company because we were the leading producer of a very specific product catalog that meshed well with what they produced. The US operations kept the old name and the tagline, a blank 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 company, was added to show who our overlords were. In addition, our operations were forcibly catapulted into the modern era. New Cisco blades, switches, industrial switches, Wi-Fi APs, etc. were bought, installed, and configured. Old systems were removed and integrated into the new systems, including a huge migration of data into SAP. SAP. I don't know. I don't know why I always take the acronyms like that and spell them out, but eh. Except for some custom software that did one thing. Software that integrates the weighing scales into the SAP. The software was written by a person who is no longer employed, and for technical reasons that custom software was never adapted or rewritten into SAP, and calls for funding for a newer hardware system that could be brought into SAP had heretofore fallen on deaf ears. You can probably guess where this is going. 
One Thursday we get panicked messages that the scales aren't working. Weighing the raw product is the first step in production, so being able to correctly weigh the right product and the right mixture is very, very important. I'm usually at the front line of this, so I did the usual. Since all the scales were affected, I checked the wireless connection between the scales and the system. Modus clients, M-O-D-A-S, clients are all up and working, but the scales can't get any data from SAP. I quickly realized that this is going to be something I haven't handled yet, so I contacted my boss. She's several hours away, camping, trying to enjoy some time off. <laughs> I tell her what's going on and what I've done. She checks a few things. The IBM server that hosts the scales program as well as the old Power 8 and some old data that hasn't been migrated isn't responding. So she makes her way back. Again, I can't put too fine a point on this. Not being able to weigh the raw product means that production can't happen. Once production runs out of already mixed raw product, no more product can be made. There's other work, finishing, shipping, etc. But moving all of press to finishing will be tough. To make the story progress faster, here are some highlights from this comedy of errors. My boss does a four hour call with our contracted third party support for the IBM server. Together they decide that the disk backplane has gone out. By contract, the third party support had to have a tech dispatch with the replacement part within four hours of the ticket being created. We work on a yearly contract that is paid once a year. My boss, is it received? Wrecked and submitted the bill 30 days before the bill was due. Someone in billing changed the terms to 90 days. The IBM server backplane went out five days after the contract ended. By this time, IBM support was closed, so we had to wait until Friday. Even if we could get the third party paid, it would have been late into the following week before they would work with us. We had to buy an out of warranty support contract with IBM, but they wouldn't be able to send a tech until the following Monday. They shipped the replacement part and it's received Monday morning. I note that it isn't a backplane, but the entire system board sans backplane. Oh my gosh. <laughs> IBM tech comes out Monday late morning, he pokes around for a while and makes a long call to the IBM support line and comes to the conclusion that the backplane went out, which is the conclusion we came to earlier with IBM and the third party support. But because they sent out a system board and not the backplane, he couldn't help. IBM tech found the right part and we had it overnighted to be delivered first thing Tuesday morning. After talking with the IBM tech, I discovered he had to drive several hours to our location. I quickly asked if we can pay for a hotel room so he didn't have to drive home and back the next morning. Oh, I can't come back Tuesday as my daughter's having her tonsils removed. I should be back Wednesday or Thursday. My boss's heart nearly explodes. This means we would have been almost a week with no mix being made. Very important people with very interesting accents are asking questions and not liking the answers. Fortunately, IBM says they can send someone else on Tuesday. Tuesday comes and the back plane is replaced, but the server isn't responding. I tell the new IBM tech that I'm pretty sure the previous one put the server in manual mode. Huh, look at that. He did put it in manual mode. My boss's heart rate slightly drops. It's finally up and running, but degraded because a hard drive's died. Another call to IBM is made and they send out a replacement drive and a tech should be on site by Friday to replace the drive. Drive arrives, tech arrives, tech drops replacement hard drive onto the floor, installs it anyway. Oh my God. Systems back to purring like a very loud kitten for now. And then most of the old scales died anyway. Oh well. At least now the funding for new scale system has been approved. Have a great day. I've said this before, you know, I don't understand why companies keep ancient systems around. And I, and I know you guys have answered this, you know, because a lot of times they're very uh, machine specific or system specific and they don't really get that much, like they're not being abused. They don't really wear out like that. And, you know, you can keep them running for years. The problem is at some point you're going to come to a, train wreck with this kind of stuff where one thing goes out of date there's no real replacement part for it and you've got to upgrade your whole system to make it all work and it sounds like these guys hit that time interesting though big mix does anybody know what company this is i'm i'm kind of curious now anyway that would be just my luck that you know whatever new part that i needed and was, it was urgent to get would be the one that was dropped on the floor so but at least you got it running for now that's not my son's laptop Years ago, had a college student bringing by his laptop for repairs. Keyboard stopped working, according to him, and he had no idea what the cause could be. After he left, I quickly surmised that someone spilled a sugary beverage on it. So I contacted tech support for the model, let's say it was HP, and they quickly placed an order for a replacement part. During the call, support also mentioned that a previous support call was made for this laptop. For you guessed it, a spilled soft drink. Noting that information, I proceeded with the order, and when the part arrived, swapped out the keyboard. After verifying that the laptop was functioning properly, contacted customer to pick it up. 
I left it running on the repair table and moved on to other tickets. The following morning, I noticed that the screen was blank and decided to tap the keys to awaken it. Nothing happened. I listened and could hear the cooling fan running, so I cycled the power. Power's back on, except the screen is still blank. I reached out to the customer to tell them the situation and see how they wished to proceed. Here's when Dad, a local attorney and expert radio slash TV commentator, gets involved. He starts cussing at me and threatening me with a lawsuit if I don't replace and repair his son's computer. I calmly inform him that no, I will do no such thing for a previously damaged computer. Incredulous, he accuses me of lying about previous damage to cover my ass for negligence. That's when I inform him of the conversation I had with HP. Now I head him dead to rights, but this is where I was surprised. After his brain audibly glitches, he says, What the F are you talking about, HP? My son owns a Dell. My response was that clearly there is some misunderstanding here on your part because I'm looking at an HP, not a Dell. No apologies, nothing comes from Mr. Attorney. Instead, he sends the kid to come get the laptop and pay the bill. I had to know what the hell just happened, so when the kid shows up, I ask. He sheepishly admits that he had his frat, frat bro's laptop because frat bro had broken the kid's Dell laptop and given the kid his HP laptop. Guess frat bro never mentioned spilling a Coke on the HP and this kid figured his parents would be none the wiser. To this day, Mr. Attorney's on TV and radio to offer his opinions on whatever legal case is in the news and I chuckle every time I see or hear him. Honestly, it sounds like Mr. Attorney is a little full of himself, which with most of the attorneys I've ever met, that's sort of standard operating procedure. They all seem, even the nice ones, seem a little bit full of themselves, uh, a little too overconfident, if you ask me, but what do I know? I've been around attorneys most of my life, and while some of them, most of them can be nice people, uh, you know, you have the flighty ones, you have the really downright stupid ones, you have the smart but really arrogant asshole ones. They run the gamut, really. <laughs> and I don't really want to piss any one of them off because most of them know the law better than I do. And even if I did know a little bit about legal situations, they could probably twist it enough to get me strung up pretty quick. So, yeah, always good to stay on the good side of them. No, you can't just upgrade any CPU. As the only person in my family who works in IT, I'm permanently on call as my parents' tech support despite living halfway across the country. My dad usually calls about a server he wants to set up, and my mom usually calls about basic how do I do this on Excel questions. The other day, dad called me saying he's thinking of upgrading the graphics card in his main PC. This machine is about 13 years old at least and has integrated graphics only, and about 4 gigabytes of DDR3. He says it struggles to run Photoshop, which, yeah, I bet it does. After a bit of a chat, he says he wants to upgrade the CPU as well. He says he has an early generation i5 and wants to upgrade to a late gen i9 without upgrading the motherboard. At this point, I'm thinking just get parts for a whole new PC at this point, but he's adamant that it would be cheaper to just swap the GPU and CPU. Oh, dad, I wish it worked like that. Oh, look, there's a cat in the window back there. And he's going to make it so you can't see him. I went through with him all the reasons he can't just pop a new i9 in there and be done, in particular the fact that it literally won't fit in the socket. Eventually, he begrudgingly accepted the PC was no longer fit for purpose, and I offered to find the parts for him and give him an idea of the price. It struck me later that night that my dad taught me how to build computers. He and I built my XP machine, which I had all the way up until 2013. He built every computer in his office and at our house, but technology has moved on and left him behind. So now I get to be the teacher. It's funny, I mean, I've built a couple computers over the years and tinkered and taken them apart, see what made them tick when I first got my first Windows 95 PC, <laughs> things like that. But uh, I've I found that technology is sort of leaving me behind. I mean, I don't, I don't want to say it's totally leaving me behind. Maybe I'm just a little bit late to the game. You know, I find out things, certain techs a little later than other people because... You know, honestly, if something's working, I really don't usually fuss with it. So by the time I figure out that I need something or want something, it's usually been out for a few years already. I mean, crikey, I'm using a webcam that gamers have been using for years. I do have a fairly decent motherboard set up. Uh, it's not the latest greatest. If I wanted a new GPU, if I wanted a new CPU, I definitely need to upgrade the motherboard. I think everything else is okay. I think the RAM would swap over. I think the GPU would swap over and all that stuff. So... At some point, I may go ahead and upgrade. We'll see. Not sure if it's even worth it for what I do. Honestly, this system works really well for me. Uh, it's the laptop stuff that I'm having issues with. At some point, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and get a laptop that's got a little more juice to it so that I can actually do my stuff at the bridge without worrying about, you know, if I plug one more USB thing in, 
it's all going to go kerflui. And that, that is the problem I'm having right now. There's one regular USB port, two USB-C ports, and they can both be interchanged to charge the battery. So there's a power cord in one of them. And uh, I need an adapter for the other one, but I had a powered, I have a powered USB hub. And I thought that I could run a lot of the USB stuff through that to the laptop and be okay since everything's powered. Evidently not. Uh, I plug, you know, my microphone interface in there and my wireless mouse and things like that. And the sound skips and goes stupid or it just doesn't work right. At some point, I got to stop cheaping out and just bite the bullet and do it. But, yeah, you, know, you know, I'm a cheap SOB. What can I say? Learning on the job back in the olden days. Many years ago, I was fresh out of school and new to the world of IT. I was basically the computer guy for a small company that sold mainly PCs to people in a small town. This is pre-Windows XP, so we're talking a long time ago. We had a little bit of server work, but it was mainly my PC slow, my printer won't work, those kind of jobs. One day I get a call out for a new customer. My manager took the call, didn't ask many questions, just hook up the printer to the computer please and thank you. We usually didn't take newer customers that didn't buy computers off of us. You never knew what was going to come up. I get to this house and freeze in horror. It was a Mac. Not just any Mac. Mac Classic era. With an old LPT style printer. No USB yet. Now this was a time before the return of jobs and not many people had Macs, especially in my hometown. Also, I had never worked on a Mac at this point in my life. This is pre-jumping on a smartphone to Google search. I could go back to the shop, but that would take time and also annoyance from my boss. So I sat down and after an hour managed to figure out the basics of Mac OS enough to get the printer running like a champ. Back at the shop I get an apology and an attaboy. He forgot to ask what type of machine it was, just assumed it was a PC. Also the family was rather important in our town. While they never bought a PC for the family, their business certainly did. I'm not huge on butt kissing the important families and companies in town, uh, but sometimes you know... Uh, Doing something a little out of the way might be nice. I still wouldn't kiss their ass, but, you know, I'm not saying I would turn down the work either. I know almost zero about Mac anything. My brain doesn't seem to work well in Mac and iPhone. <laughs> so, um, not sure why, but, you know, my, my brain has always worked well with Windows-based systems or file systems, all that stuff the software setups, and uh, same thing with Androids, you know, especially Galaxies. Uh, it's just the way my brain works. And I like the fact that on Android and PC, I don't have to have a ton of specialized software to be able to... This In this day and age, it's not as bad, but, you know, I can use my phone like a USB drive when it was Android-based and Windows PCs. I could plug my phone directly in with a USB cable and I had no problem, you know, dragging and dropping pictures, videos, songs. You know, if I bought songs and had them in MP3 on my system, I could send them back and forth all day long and create albums, do this and that. But I remember there was a problem, especially with iTunes, where it saved it in some special format, uh, some proprietary thing where you couldn't just drag and drop. You had to try to find a way to convert the music first before you did that. And, uh, Unless you had iTunes on every device, which I didn't. I didn't particularly like iTunes. So anyway, guys, glad to be back. Hope you enjoyed the stories today. And uh, until the next video, we'll see you.